So here is the mystery lock and wow, what a treat. We didn't see this last time. So just behind me here is Harry Roberts Bridge. This is an area I've covered before. I've walked up basically from the bottom of 14 locks to here in a couple of videos, just to cover this because of work that's going on. Now Newport Council uh, put 1.9 million pounds down to clear this up to this point here uh, and to get the reeds out, to line it, make it watertight and sort of clear any vegetation. Now on the other side, uh, right up to the border of Torfane, that's been kind of done already and parts of the bit south of the M4. But this bit's just been started. Now they're working up here now. You can see the digger up in the distance there. They're clearing this quite quickly actually. It's got like a little scoop on it, uh, which is more of a mesh cage. And what it's doing is it's picking up and pulling up all the reeds, all the debris out the bottom uh, to clear it through. Now, further down they are doing branches and stuff, but there's less overhanging branches causing an issue here. There are branches going across, but it's, it's a canopy, so you don't want to sort of destroy all the vegetation. You just want to get it to a point where you can easily run a boat down. You might be able to see it on this now. It's pulling loads up, it's dead quick. And this, this is it basically. So you can see all the roots. So the, the reeds are actually kind of died off now and they, they don't really uh, survive the winter, but it does leave all the roots in. And that thing is just picking it up and pulling it out. This is what you want to get rid of. Cause if you get rid of the roots, it won't grow back next year. What happens if you leave the roots in, it just sprouts every year and just keeps sprouting and sprouting and sprouting. So the more of that you get out, the easier it is to maintain. So what Thomas brothers are doing is they're clearing all of this and they're leaving it to dry for a couple of days. Um, once it's dry, anything that's living in it can crawl out and go in the canal wherever it needs to go. And then they'll clear this, uh, they'll bring some trailers down and they'll get rid of it. I don't think any of it's been spread. Sometimes you spread in the in the banks, which rots down and gives sort of good feed for the vegetation in the, in the banks, but I think this is all being removed. So you can see this is being filled up with water from there. We're, we're in the kind of, on the edge of a valley here. The water's running down the hill and keeping this full. This is a very leaky section of canal apparently though. And when, as soon as the summer comes along, this, this will be pretty dry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk down further. If I go back towards 14 locks, uh, they've done work further down where they've done a lot more tree clearance and stuff and, and dug it out. What I'm hoping to see is the mystery lock. If you remember from a previous video, I want to see that a bit clearer. So fingers crossed, that's, that's what we're going to find. So I'm just following a diversion now. The canal is uh, just over that sort of tree line there behind us. But this is a cracking view. When this is open, this is going to be one of the most beautiful stretches of canal to, to, to go down, I think. You've got all the, the hills there, you've got the valleys all sort of over there of South Wales. So this canal originally ran to Crumlin, or this arm of the canal ran to Crumlin. It's only going to run to Ponty Wan now. Now, most of that sort of on has been built on. There was a further 12 locks on this, on this branch across uh, and stuff, but there's an aqueduct where it's got to. Uh, I've actually walked that bit with the kids. It's quite nice. That's going to be restored uh, up to sort of that point there. And then the canal's lost. Now, if you look at this, hopefully you can see this. This is waterway roots and it's, uh, there we go. That's where I am now. So this is Harry Roberts Bridge. We've uh, come down through here. This is where they're restoring at the moment. And then they're doing it in sections, I think between bridges. It only takes them a few days to do each section and then onto 14 locks, which has been done. And then all of this south has been done and a bit up to uh, the edge of Torfane up here somewhere has been done as well. This is a great little tool. We'll zoom out look onto the maps. So if you look at sections like this, you can already see just quite how much has been done on that first section. This is very reeded. You know, it's impassable. It's not good for anything really. Not good for, for wildlife and stuff because it's completely blocked and choked up. So they clear all that out. There'll be some reeds left to grow along the banks, probably not on this side eventually, but definitely on that side, all canals normally have the off side being quite full of reeds, which gives places for the ducks and stuff to, to, uh, to sort of nest and, and whatnot. So here we are at the top of 14 locks. So this whole section behind me is being cleared and right up to here now, from what I gather, below here is done. So let's go and have a look. There's also been work happening down here for the canal center and stuff, which you would have seen in, again in previous videos. It wasn't quite finished when I was here last. So we will kind of look at that first. Here's a lock look. 
it's in pretty good condition. A lot of these locks are actually in, in good condition. They've been partly restored and stuff. They just need gates. They're going to be sort of metal gates on here. And what they're doing is uh, they have this design, which is standard for across the whole the canal now. And instead of making lock gates to suit, they are instead cutting uh, and and building to make the locks all the same size. So they can literally use one design for the entire uh, the entire modern Brett Canal and just fit these locks into everyone. Now the, the metal locks last sort of 10 times as long, somewhere between two and 300 years. And the wooden ones only last about 20 to 30 years. And cost wise, there's sort of 20,000 pound for a wooden gate and 30,000, uh, sorry, 60,000 for a, a metal gate. So, you know, it makes sense. This wasn't here last time I was here. This is the, the path they were actually building. Uh, they, I filmed this bridge going in across here that was just on. And that's like the footpath going past Kevin Bridge. And the visitor center is just over there, which has got a really good calf and stuff. Got the locks down here. And then on this side, you've got all the pounds. Uh, the pounds do switch uh, size as you cross the canal further down. Yeah, I'm starting to be able to see things already. So if you look, you, you're not going to see it on this camera, but there's the trees just in front of us there. We've just gone past 19. Uh, there's trees in front of us there. Oh, all of this actually. This was uh, well overgrown, I believe. So you can see where they've chopped the, the overhanging branches off. So they're not destroying the trees. They are literally cutting any bits back which are overhanging the canal and causing a nuisance. So these locks are quite cool in the way that they're, they're built. Yeah, I couldn't see any of this look. They cleared all, all the ivy and stuff, all the overgrowth. Uh, how cool is that? So yeah, there's the bottom lock. They're in sets of two apart from one set of three, which uh, I'll get to, that's the mystery lock, which we'll get to in a minute. So you can see the lock comes in. Now they're not a staircase lock. A staircase lock would have, this gate would basically be much bigger, as tall as, as this wall here. And you would go in from one lock, go up quite deep into it, and then come in to the bottom of the next lock, and then, then, then go up. And you have no little bit between. With these locks, they have got this section in the middle. I'm not really sure what the point of that is. Rather than having, saving a gate basically you, you've got to have this extra bit now this runs down here into the pounds on the sides so it could be something to do with a better way to manage water because they would have you know saved that water then in the pound to go down for the next lock so they weren't losing as much water but it does uh it does seem peculiar to have this because you wouldn't get a boat in here i don't know how long that is it's it's not um well these weren't 70 foot locks so they were, they were 60 odd foot, i think 66 foot so that was 17 and 18 that we were just in and we're then into the pound at the bottom which was there was this pile in there the last time i was here which i assumed was them clearing it may not be actually uh it was november beginning of november so there was actually because of the very mild autumn we were having there was still some leaves on the trees up here but this is, you know, completely bare now. So it's, it's sometimes a little bit hard to see what's been done and what hasn't, but it does definitely look a lot clearer. So if you look on this side, you can see the pounds and they drop down from pound to another pound kind of down there. So they're kind of all kind of intertwined in the, in the side of the locks. But this is the, the spill we're here. Which is quite cool. I'm I'm pretty sure this wasn't as clear as this last time. This is all freshly cut. You can see it's all freshly cut. So actually, that wood on the top there may have been. You can look. They've got a wooden top on these spillways here. This wall is uh, in quite good condition. So these locks raise the canal about 147 foot in just a thousand meters. That's less than half a mile, so it's pretty quick. Uh, Thomas Stadford Jr. was the one who uh, built these. He was from a canal engineering family. His dad was an engineer, his brothers were both engineers. And they had their own ways of building things. Now, Thomas Stadford e. Jr. had a bit of a patchy record on canal building. He was building the Lempster Canal at the same time as this, and he was only to, uh, devoting a small amount of time to that canal and he had a lot of issues and was was quite put down by uh, John Rennie on that canal 
but he liked to build his locks really close together so instead of having like a spread out flight of locks he would put as many locks as he could in one small space and have them you know as a steep one so this type of lock that he's done is is quite common for for his style of building so here's the panel on the side look so that's uh, two locks we've just been at and that's where we just above there was where we were looking at the pounds coming down now you had a pound on the side and then it went down to another pound and this is where we are now but you're now in to three locks in one now this is the mystery lock well the second one down is the mystery lock i discussed it on my last video but you couldn't really see it very well uh it was quite overgrown it'd been cleared before wow oh yeah i can see it already that looks so good right so i'm going to save that description for down there let's let's go let's let's go right next to the lock now so i'm actually going to go above it now this is pretty cool because i couldn't see any of this last time so lock coming down the gap between the lock as i keep saying the mystery lock and then you'll see straight after that is another lock so this was the only triple lock in the flights now people don't really know the proper answer for this there's a lot of theories been flying around but my thought is this now let's get down there and see but you, what you can probably see is they're different heights so that is very shallow on that side and that's not that's uh that's got a lot more depth to it and then you've got the main lock through the middle so as you were coming through these locks you had you, you'd be coming down now you're coming down laden so you were full so you would have come into this lock you'd have let the water out of here and a boat that's empty would be coming up so the boat that's empty would sit into the lock would come up come up the first lock sit into the second lock you would empty down through that water would fill that lock up that boat that's empty in the bottom would go across to the shallow side it's unladen it's got no weight into it so it sits a lot higher in the water the full boat would come down through here it would already be at the bottom and it would come into this lock and go across to that side it's laden it's full it's heavy it's going to sit lower in the water so that's why you've got to step down from that one to that one empty boat full boat that would then allow the empty boat to come out to the middle go off into the next lock fill up that one would then come across the full boat drop into the main chamber and off it goes down through the locks not 100 percent sure that that is correct but i think that's a good very good example and it's pretty cool to see now because like i said last time i was here you couldn't see any of this it was so overgrown so well done to thomas brothers who have been clearing all this they've done a great job uh, it's really cool to see this heritage feature still here i really do hope these get returned to water there's there's a lot going on on this canal if you follow my social media pages you'll see just quite how much i have sort of fallen in love with this canal it's there's so much here so if you follow the other arm up you've got some really really pretty basins with loads of history tramways and stuff i haven't recorded at them yet but i've been taking my kids up uh, on the weekends my wife works sometimes it's really worth revisiting these things you know i didn't think I'd see that much down here i came to film further up i actually thought more had been done on the top section i knew they'd done loads down there and i thought i'd just pop down and see these locks here the guys who were working at the top told me that you know some clearance had been done down here but i was not expecting to see that lock in such glory as it is there uh, I, you can also see you couldn't see any of this last time you've got the pounds over the sides there so this is all all this bramble's been cleared out of here which allows the trust to sort of come in and manage it better you've got another pound down here you've got another two locks at the bottom here this is the bottom of the flight and then you go off around the corner under the motorway and then you're off to the junction then for uh, newport basically so you can go up then the other arm which we will cover in the future i promise it's a beautiful canal and then another bit where it dropped off to the docks at newport that's uh, got quite a fascinating history in itself it changed a few times over the years it's not gonna go into newport like it did but you know hopefully one day it will connect back to the river usk and this will be technically connected back to the network you're gonna have to go down the seven to to get to it but you kind of do for some other canals anyway so this doesn't seem to have had as much done here you can see just kind of how 
overgrown it was this is what all the locks were like all the way through they had a lot of sort of tree growth and you know small trees growing up through a lot of bramble a lot of ivy a lot of stuff like that a lot of stuff growing out the sides of the locks so tr you know really blocking it off it's amazing to see just how good that is there so thanks for watching have a great day